Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevails. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Okay, how many are glad you're here for our session eight? We're finally made it. Amen. Greater work, yeah. session number eight. And we're going to be talking about healing the sick. Amen? Amen. All right, let's get started. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. Father God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the sending the Holy Spirit to be um, another comforter just like Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask you to give us revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. And we thank you for the blessing that's upon us. And all the people of God said, yes and amen and amen. Before we get started, I just wanted to share that those of you that are watching by DVD and live video and all the good stuff, we just want you to know that we have a lot on our partners page. If you become a partner with us, you can get 12 hours of different kinds of teaching. You can get eight hours of Holy Spirit teaching, eight hours of who I am in Christ, eight hours spirit, soul, and body, eight hours of uh, how to heal the sick. We have so much teaching on there. You will become a very valuable person for the Lord with all the knowledge that you'll be receiving. So we invite you to become a member and tell your friends in Jesus' name. Amen. So our text is John chapter 14 and verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And as you understand, it's talking about you doing the works. Say praise the Lord. Works are healing, manifestations, deliverance, all types of things that Jesus did, we get to do as well. So I'm going to be giving you, the believer, a very valuable set of tools and those that use these tools can become an expert and will attain success in the kingdom of God. I will be teaching different topics that will establish you as a very valuable asset in the kingdom of God and as a minister of the Lord. And this is our last session. Amen. We taught you how to be born again. We taught you how to get people born again. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to minister so you can copy what I did so you can get people led in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and also hearing the voice of God. We taught you understanding who you are in Christ, your freedoms and instructions in righteousness. We taught you how to operate with the Holy Spirit and to be become spiritual conscious. We taught you about praying in tongues with interpretation and understanding His plans. And we taught you knowing your authority in Christ. And we taught you binding and casting out devils and spiritual warfare. And today we're going to be teaching you how to heal the sick, the four things, and doing the Word of God. Amen? So, let's get started on healing the sick. Amen. So, we know that it's God's will that you be healed. And there's many, many scriptures about that, and that's why I brought up understanding who you are in Christ, learning how to heal the sick, and there's many, many different types of teachings that I have on our website for our, our partners. So, there'll be more scriptures than what I'm giving you today. But it is God's will that you be healed, and we see that in Exodus 15 and 26. And we'll read the last sentence where it says, For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that heals you, in Jesus' name. Amen? Because we understand that God wants us well. We also saw that in Matthew chapter 8, verse 3, where Jesus came down from the hill, and a leper met him. In the Old Testament, if you were clean and a leprosy person came in your presence and you touched him, you became leprous. But here's Jesus, who is the righteousness of God, touches the leper, and the leper gets cleaned. And Jesus remains clean. So we have to understand the healing power of God is for us to keep people well in Jesus' name. So let me show you another scripture over here in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Verse 45 through 49, when you know your Lord, when you know the Lord, like King David did, it's easy to trust him. Let's read the scripture in 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 49. Then said David to the Philistine, 
Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with a sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. But David put his hand in his bag, took thence a stone and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead. That stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. David knew God, and David knew that if he stood up for the Lord, God would help him. That is trust. And this is an area, if you're going to minister healing, you must know and trust the Lord that he will do what he said he would do. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God is always a giver. He's a giver of healing. In Psalms 147, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He's always giving to help you. He's not a bad God, full of wrath. He's full of goodness. He's full of love. And He wants to see us healed in Jesus' name. Since we know that God is with us in healing, then we must realize there is an anointing. In Isaiah chapter 10 and 27, And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. We've got to understand, when we're out ministering healing to the sick, now you've got to understand some things here. We've taught you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, being born again, baptism of the Holy Spirit. We talked to you about understanding your authority, knowing who you are in Christ, and operating with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, getting interpretation. There is the anointing coming upon you, so when you are ministering healing, it is so easy because it's God and you at work. Greater works shall you do. So we've got to recognize there is an anointing upon you to do the works that Jesus did. Amen? Now the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the release of power for the believer in Jesus' name to heal the sick. We see that in Mark chapter 16, 17 through 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Verse 18, they shall take up serpents, spiritual warfare, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Say, praise the Lord. So it is the release of the power of God when you're laying hands on the sick, and these people are being made whole according to the scripture they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover i trust god just like david trusted the lord when he's confronted the enemy called the philistine here we are confronted a disease or a sickness and it's the same way because the anointing of god is destroying that yoke or that sickness and you're doing your part by the laying on of hands amen now jesus came to destroy the works of the devil amen which is what are the works of the devil? Diseases and sin. Jesus came to destroy that. And he bore our infirmities. We see that in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought on him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. So he bore our infirmities. So when Jesus died on the cross, he took it and he took all of that. So therefore, we now have the authority, we taught about that, that Jesus took all of the sin, all of the sickness, and we are healed. Amen. Amen. Not I'm going to be healed, I'm believing God to heal me. No, I am healed. Say it with me. 
I am healed. That's because what Jesus did for me. Miriam, my wife, made me dinner and I am full of food. I ate it. She did the work. I was more than a conqueror. I ate it. She prepared it. She went and bought the food. She did all of the work. And I got the enjoyment of it. Jesus has done all of the work. We just lay hands on them and God heals them. It's just that simple. I can trust God to do that. How about you? So when we realize that Jesus bore our infirmities, our sicknesses, our diseases, it's a done deal. I am healed. Come on, say it with me. I am healed. Now let me show you a scripture here. A lot of us Christians, we pray and say, Oh, Father God, this person here is such a wonderful person. Really? You don't know how cantankerous they are, stubborn they might be. They don't, we don't know how they don't want to do what we tell them to do. We know, we know people are not always like that. So why do you con the Lord? Come on, He knows everything, right? And then you turn around and say, Oh, God, I love this person regardless of their problems, but would you heal them? How many know that we're asking God to come clean our room that we messed up? That's not how it's supposed to work. So I call that passing the buck. Have you ever gone to work where you have to f take over where somebody else left off? You know, there's a lot of places where they work 24-7. They have a morning shift, afternoon shift, and evening shift, and you show up, the first guy who worked the morning shift and the afternoon shift couldn't get their jobs done, so now you have to do your job plus their job. That's passing the buck. And they get as much money as you get, but you do more work. How many have been there? That's no fun, isn't it? But we turn around and we tell God, God, would you heal so-and-so? We're praying that you would heal them. And that's not what God asked us to do. So do you think that's the way we should look at God's asking me to heal or is God demanding that I do what his son did? Amen. So let's go to Matthew chapter 10. You want to go over there with me? All right. All right. I missed something here. Something happened. What did I do? Bless the Lord. Got out of line. Okay, Matthew chapter 10 which did not get on here, or else this computer is acting out. Nope, Mac. Matthew chapter 10 is one of my favorite scriptures. And verse 1, it says, And he called unto him his twelve disciples. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, Jesus gave his disciples power. So were the disciples supposed to say, Jesus, would you come heal this person? Or did Jesus just give them some power? He gave them power, right? Okay. Right? So Peter goes, hey, Bartholomew, I see you sitting around the back room. Why don't you go heal the sick? Because I, I, I did my part. It's time to do your part. That's passing a buck. See, I want to be the guy. I want to be the one. I know these people know how, but I want to beat them to the punch because I want to go out and heal the sick. I want to cast out devils. I want to get people well. I want to be the one. I, I know they know how, but I want to beat them. I want to get to, it's so exciting to do it. They've done it before. I want to do more of it. I want to do greater works. See, this is the attitude that I have. I want to do that. I want to win. I want to be first place. I don't want to take second place. I don't want to be down on the bottom. I want to be first. I want to be out there. I want to get around to people. I want to do it. That's what you guys are learning, right? So, don't pass the buck. So when the time is to pray for the sick, get out there and be the first one to do it. And watch them get well before the rest show up. Where's the sick person? Oh, they get well. And it's really it's exciting, see? So then let's jump over here to verse 7. As you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, the kingdom of heaven, or the Holy Spirit, is working. It's at hand. It's right there. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. So you've been given the power for free. Turn around and give it to somebody else, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm getting them saved. Now, in verse 1, in verse 7, and verse 8, where does it say for you to ask God to heal? Them? So don't pass the buck asking God to do it after Jesus told us to do it. Are you seeing this? 
But we do this all the time. Oh, Father God, please, can I have some money? Will you help me pay my bills? Did God tell us to pray like that? And he says, you just seek me first and you have all this stuff added to you. So why are you asking? I already know that you need it. See, we got to learn how to put things together in proper perspective. Knowing your authority, would you be doing this? You're, you've been in the police academy for 16 years. You are not a novice, right? Do you go up to your captain and say, will you come down and arrest this guy? No. You know your authority. It's been given to you. So God has given it to us to, to arrest the devil and all his diseases. Say, thank you, Lord. We have been given. Amen. Praise the Lord. We got a few that are awake. Amen. Sing hallelujah. You love it. They didn't say it either, Lord. So I'm just preaching to the people out there. All right. Praise God. Jesus never prayed for anyone to be healed. Isn't that amazing? We call, can I pray for you? Really, we should say, can I minister healing for you? Can I minister healing to you? But we turn around and say, oh, can I pray for you? And people accept prayer, but then when you start commanding, they're kind of like, what are you doing? Oh, it doesn't matter as long as you're well. Amen. Amen. So he never prayed for anyone to be healed. Instead, he commanded healing. When you decree afflicted body parts to become healed and normal, you are speaking with authority. We call this commanding in Jesus' name. And that scripture is in Luke chapter 4, verse 39. Notice what Jesus did. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she arose and ministered unto him. He didn't say, okay, God, it's up to you now. I'm here. Heal this woman. He didn't do that. He, Jesus, spoke to the disease, the fever, rebuked it, told it to leave, and it did. Immediately, she arose and ministered. So we are to decree and speak to body parts. People have problems with their foot, their toes, their nose, their ankles, their blood systems, their organs, brains, their strokes, whatever it is, you speak to it with the authority given to you in the name of Jesus and expect that person to be healed. Say, thank you, Jesus. Now, we taught you about spiritual warfare. It could be a spirit. You better pray in tongues and find out. Don't guess. Don't hope. Know. K-N-O-W. Know what you're supposed to know. Say, thank you, Lord. Now, we also know that people want to see miracles. Anybody here want to see one? How about you guys? You want to see one? Okay. You said yes. All right. Thank you, Lord. When they say they see things, that ignites their faith. So most people in the ministry have Thomas faith. Thomas was one who said, well, if I don't see the nail prints or the hole in his side, I won't believe. Or do you want to have Abraham faith, believing that you have something before you have it is faith. And most people want to see it before they believe it. So we show you a miracle so you can see something, but what you see is an outward sign, but the person is being healed on the inside. So when they see something, their faith ignites, and that's good. We demonstrate the power of God with healings. I want you people, to sense your believers, to remember this. The miracle is for the unbeliever, so they can believe in Jesus as the Lord, plus get their healing. We already believe. We already understand. We already know miracles are part of the supernatural part. We're part of the family. We understand miracles aren't a big deal to us because that's just the way life is and supernatural. So we know that miracles happen all the time. We don't have to see one just to believe it. It's exciting. But we're the believer. It's for the unbeliever, the person who hasn't yet made a decision that Jesus Christ is really alive and he's their Lord. And when they see a miracle, yeah, that's going to ignite their faith and draw them in. Amen? Okay, so what we do, we call it the arm thing. Miriam, come on up here. I want to demonstrate with you over here by this chair. We call this the arm thing because what we're going to do is heal this part of her shoulder. She might have a neck ache. She might have a back ache. She might have problems. Let me show you here. She might have problems in the shoulder blades. 
Uh, the ribs that go across here, up and down is her spine. The rib heads come in, she might have a problem there. She might have a problem across her chest. Her collarbone can be out of position. She can have ribs up and in here that are out of position. She can have all kinds of hang-ups that will cause her to have pain. Most of the time, that pain is going to be here in this area. And when a person has a shoulder problem, they can't raise their arm, they got a serious problem. So we're going to show you how to minister in the name of Jesus, and yet for a non-believer to be healed. Now, the Holy Spirit is reminding me of this. When I went to the Philippines back in 1988, we did the arm thing to this one lady, and she fell out under the power of God under the floor with no catcher, and it was awesome. The next day, she came and gave a testimony. She said, when I saw my arms grow out, I knew God healed me, and I don't have any more pain where I had pain before. And totally the whole crowd was excited because she saw her arm move. So what we do is nose and toes in the same direction, and your arms stretch forward, and your fingers tight, and stretch like in a stick me to trip. Now, I can tell that this shoulder is higher than this shoulder. So we keep the arms apart, not together, but a quarter of an inch. I'll make the command. Everybody knows I'm speaking to a mountain of sickness or shoulder problems, and I'm not touching her. I'm speaking. Jesus spoke the word, and they were healed. So here are the words I say. In the name of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I speak and decree to your upper back muscles, ligaments, and tendons to relax. I command every nerve in your body, upper body parts, in your shoulder, in your nose, and through your chest, and through your back, and right into your neck and into your ears to be released right now in Jesus' name. I command by the Spirit of God every, every part of you to go back in position. Now this arm here is a little bit shorter. This one's a little longer than it was to start with. Say thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that straightened up. Happened really quick, didn't it? Okay, now relax. Move your arms around. Tell me what happened feel better you can move around move your neck around feel all the tightness gone mm -hmm. all this here is not so tight anymore mm -hmm. you may be seated thank you Jesus the arm thing is something you can't see because what will happen is your arms aren't really short it's just that your back is tight and the muscles relaxed and the Holy Spirit adjusts you everyone's been to a chiropractor you know the neck bone connected to the backbone you know that story but the power of God adjusts her I didn't touch her it's the Holy Spirit now, she wasn't always having a problem up here, so it was a demonstration. But I don't have anybody here that has an arm or a neck problem that could have been totally well. And what happens is when a person who's got that problem, when they put their hands out, they're short, almost sometimes a half inch, sometimes longer. And that demonstrates to you that they're tight and twisted up in the shoulder area. So when you make the command like the power of God, then the arm will grow out and become equal with the other one. Then when they relax, there's no more pain. So that's the demonstration of the arm thing. Amen. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Can you all say that? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. See, you've got to grasp that. When did you get anointed? Say, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came upon you. You're in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you began to speak in other tongues. That's when that anointing came upon you. Now that anointing is on you. Okay? Regardless if you're a bad person or a good person, God put the anointing on you. We know that King Saul was the first king and he wasn't quite up to par. But yet David had several opportunities to kill him. But he did not because you do not mess with God's anointed. God will take care of him. Amen. So that anointing was on King Saul, and if he had understood it, he would, he would have been an awesome person, but he didn't. So when the anointing comes on you through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, get sold out for God. Do what you know you want to do for Jesus, and just do it for Him and not for your own glory. Amen? So that anointing comes upon you. We are to go into all the world and preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils, and do the stuff that Jesus did. And in this prayer it says, because He has anointed me to preach. We're to preach the gospel to the poor. You're no longer to be poor anymore. You're supposed to become rich. That's what he's saying. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, 
to set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. That's a lot to do. And in this information that I've given you so far in the last seven and a half messages, you have that information that's inside you to do that work. Greater work shall you do because of the anointing of God that's on you. Now, whenever we do healing in the name of Jesus, it's all done by the power of God. It's not by my power. I don't grab you and manipulate you. It's not by my power, but the Lord. Amen? Since it's Him, let Him do it. Get out of the way. I've seen people get a hold of people and they're doing adjustments and they're doing all the power. They got them on their head and they're pushing them. That's your power. No, 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 no. When you lay hands on a person, you put your hands on them ever so lightly. As light as a mosquito. And sometimes you can't even feel the mosquitoes on you until he bit you. You got to understand, your muscles are tight and strong and you can squish a mosquito, right? So don't do it by your power. Let God do it. Amen? We lay hands on people with the weight of a feather, ever so slow, tender and gently. The scripture is in Zechariah 4 and verse 6. They answer and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto everybody here, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So we need the Holy Spirit to do the work. So we make the commandments. The Holy Spirit is pushing forth His power and they're making them whole. So can you say we are working together with the Lord and He's confirming that word with signs following. Amen? Amen. So many people have pain in the internal organs, lower back and hip pain. Okay, come on up here. I want to demonstrate that. So I don't, I'm assuming you don't have any of those problems. Do you have any of those problems? Lower back pain? No, just stand there. Hip pain, internal organs. So what we do, I'm going to turn you around this way. Move this way so the camera can see. What we're doing is we're speaking to this part of the back. goes all the way around the sides, all the way through the tummy area, all the way around, all the way back. Okay? So everybody knows that she's got hip bones. Everybody find your hip bones. Come on, put your hands on it. You can find those bones. That's where you're laying your hands. The pelvic rotate. They rotate forward, sidewards, around, and that. And they can get tweaked and pinched nerves, called a sciatic is one big one. And this can be adjusted. Now, but you've got internal organs. Okay, she's got female organs, I got male organs. Okay, she has a uterus, she has all her female stuff, and she has a period once a month. And anybody here know what cramps are at? None of you have that problem, but just in case you're one of those, you can do what we call the laying on hands on the pelvic bones to adjust the inside internal organs to be healed. A man has prostate. How do you lay hands on a prostate? Is it an area you can't put your hands in Jesus' name? And I have had an opportunity where I've laid my hands on a man who had that severe, oh, he was in so much pain. He was in dire straits, but the Lord had me come over, lay hands. He fell out and got up and totally said, the pain is gone. I'm so happy instantaneous miracle. Praise the Lord. So, when we lay hands, may I lay hands on you? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to turn you this side. Alright, so I'm going to put my hands on the top of your pelvic bones. Now, this is my power. This is me doing it. Are you healed? No. No. So, it's not by my, it's not by power, but by the Spirit of God. So, in order for you to be healed, I barely touch you. Can you feel? Mm -hmm. Barely, barely touching. Less of me, and more of him. So I'll make the command. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> and by the power of the Holy Spirit. You're rocking? What happened? <laughs> What's going on? I command your lower back muscles to relax. The tension to come out of there. Your pelvis to rotate in proper position. In the name of Jesus. Let's just say you had a, a hernia. I command in the name of Jesus. That hernia to be healed. I speak by the power of the Holy Spirit. For that bulging to be healed, intestine to be healed, 
and for that to be closed up and no more hernia in the name of Jesus. Let's say you had a problem with your female organs. I command every area of your female organs to be healed, the ligaments, the tendons, to relax, the nerves to be unpinched in Jesus' name. Let's say you had a sciatic nerve pain down, down your shoot in, in your leg. By the power of the Holy Spirit, devil, I command you bound, you spirit of sciatic, I command you to come out. Now I speak to that nerve to be unpinched right now. Command your pelvis bones to go in a proper position. The sciatic nerve to be unpinched. And the, uh, the little flat iron, what do we call that? The tailbone and... Um, what? Sacrum. sacrum. Thank you, Jesus. See, I called you the Holy Spirit with me. And the sacrum to be adjusted right now in Jesus' name. So as soon as, as, soon as it stopped, it stopped, didn't it? Mm -hmm. It made you go back and forth. Okay, you may be seated. What was going on with the rocking position that she had a leg that was longer or shorter? So she's off balance. Usually the Spirit of the Lord will rotate you left and right. And that puts things in adjustment. But it feels easy. But what is going on is he's relaxing all your lower back muscles. A lot of times a person will have a sciatic pinched nerve. Also the vertebrae and disc bone on bone, and you can call in creative miracles and new discs in Jesus' name, and the nerve's not to be bone on bone anymore or pinched. So that's the, the pelvic thing, we call it. we got to remember, it's all done by the power of the Holy Spirit. It was not me, was that you? No, it was not me. It was the Spirit of God that was ministering to her because we made a command. So we're working together with the Holy Spirit. We make the command. We have the authority given to us in the name of Jesus, and then the Spirit of the Lord does the commanding. Isn't that a simple, fun thing to do? Amen. Now, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, For verily I say unto you that whosoever, anybody here a whosoever? Yes. Whosoever shall say unto the mountain. The mountain is what? The sickness, right? Say yes and amen. amen. Okay, the mountain is the sickness, the mountain is the problem. Okay, that, this is the scripture, it's giving you a word picture. Be thou removed, be cast in the sea. You're commanding it to leave, you're commanding that pain to go, right? And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. So I spoke to her neck, I mean her back, and I spoke to the kidney, all the different areas of her body and her organs to be healed, pain to go in the name of Jesus. Devil to go. I believe that what I say is going to come to pass. That's the objective here, right? Is there any difference between healing that sick person like that and or getting money? It's all the same. I believe that what I say I'm going to have. Mark 11, verse 23. All right. Now, when we command, uh, we make a command to heal the back. We are acting in faith. Okay? We believe that what we are saying is going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen? So let me demonstrate. Miriam, come on up. And we call this the neck thing. So we've done the arm thing, the pelvic thing. Now we're doing the neck thing. Okay? T-N-T. -T, the neck thing. The neck thing has power in it. Because we know inside her skull is her brain. And down her backbone, all the way down in are all the nerves that come out of the brain. Connected to the spine, goes into all the rest of her body and all her organs. So when she has a pain down below, it sends a signal through that nerve that she has pain someplace in her back. But what if she had a whiplash and her neck was out of adjustment? There is a lot of pain, not just in the shoulders, but up in the head, up back in here, front part of her nose, all the way around by her ears in the name of Jesus. And then all those nerves go down, so the nerves go into her heart, into her lungs. So when we're doing the neck thing, we're dispensing God's power into all of her body. This is why it's TNT. And also, m most likely, I'm not going to let it happen to you, but when I lay hands on her, the Spirit of God comes upon her, and she could fall out under the power. Since we don't have a catcher here tonight, I'll catch you. Amen. So, my thumb goes in front of her ear. My fingertips come back here, right up and down her neck bones. Okay? So you can't quite see you because her hair is a little longer. So then I very gently lay my hands on her compassionately, and I tell her, now follow the leading of my hands. So if I turn this way, you go that way. Okay? 
As I do the commands, I'll be speaking and she's going to be healed. Here we go. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I command every neck bone in your body to be healed. I speak to the nerves to be unpinched, the ligaments and tendons to be unpinched. Command all your internal uh, parts of your hearing to be healed. I speak to all the pain to go right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> if you can see the smile on her face, she's about ready to fall out. Thank you. Now, there's so much more teaching on this, on how to heal the sick in our teachings that we have on DVD, also on our partners part in the uh, website. So I'm going through this quickly because we're running out of time. But let me help you out on Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Pastor Robert. Put your name in there. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With what? The Holy Ghost. So you've got to start realizing how God has anointed me. So now you're seeing it. How God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And with what? Power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So you got to see, that's me, because I'm in Jesus, Jesus in me, so that's us. How God anointed us. You get it? Are you following this? Me and the Lord are one, aren't you? Okay, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Amen. So, when we act upon the word of the Bible, we are using our faith. So faith is functioning when you're speaking the word and doing the word. So I know it's happening. I don't say, gee, I hope I have faith. Well, you're doing it, aren't you? Yeah, well, then you're using your faith. And Jesus said, if you had a grain of mustard seed, you cast it into the sea. So it's not how much you have. It's that you're using what you have. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So I want this to come across so people understand. Now, the leg thing is a little different. And we want to grab the person's ankle bones, not their bottoms or their heels, but the ankle bones with our thumbs. So if I was holding ankles, my two thumbs would be looking at each other. And since I'm dropping my arms down parallel with their person, that's like a plumb bob, which is a string on a weight to make sure things are straight. Because you know the earth is round, and which part of the earth? So we have gravity working, so it will give you that straight line. So my arms bending down gives me the straight arm as a plumb bob. If I'm holding your ankle bones like I'm supposed to, it will give me a check to see if their back is out of alignment. Not their legs, but their back. And if they're out of alignment, I'll have one arm, one leg short, one or the other. Okay? The Bible says in Proverbs 26 and verse 7, the legs of the lame are not equal. So if they're not equal, then we must do what it takes to get them to become equal. Amen? So the leg thing is a very powerful. Matter of fact, everything I've shown you is so powerful because it's not me. It's the Lord. It's not what I do. It's what God is doing. Amen? It's the power of the Spirit of God that's of that anointing that is coming into that person to make them well. So, um, we're going to get, um, this computer keeps dying on me. So, the legs of the lame are not equal. So, we are to make the lame walk by making their legs equal. And what happens is the lower backbone, the lower tailbone, the, the lower lumbar, those get adjusted and healed immediately. And I had this opportunity when I was, you're working for KCCS radio station, Christian radio station in Salem, Oregon. I went to this bookstore and it turned out I was trying to get them to buy radio ads, but this person was in there complaining of their lower back. And I said, what happened? She said, I just got back from the doctor and I'm in so much pain. What's wrong with you? She said, the doctor said, I blew out a disc in my lumbar and I can hardly sit. I can hardly do anything. I said, would you like to be healed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that'd be great. I know I'm serious. Would you like to be healed right now? Oh, okay. So I said, here's what we're going to do. Have you sit down. We're going to pick up your legs and grow out your legs. Well, I could only lift her legs up just so high because she's in a lot of pain in her lower back. And she was off just a little bit. Couldn't tell much. But I declared and I spoke out a new disc, new vertebrae, 
the nerves to be unpinched and to be in proper alignment and blood to flow properly and to rebuke the pain in the name of Jesus. She got up and she had this funny look on her face like, I used to hurt. <laughs> I said, well, bend over. Oh, okay. So she bent over and touched her toes. It doesn't hurt anymore. Praise the Lord. Just at that moment, a doctor friend of mine who is a physical therapist comes in and he sees her, because you know what happened to her. And he said, what happened? She said, I got healed. He looked, what do you mean you got healed? Watch. And she bends over, bends backwards, and says it doesn't hurt anymore. Praise the Lord, he says. <laughs> and then he says, how, how did it happen? So she told him that I set her down and grabbed her ankles and ministered healing to her, and she was totally well. I'm saying to you, the same anointing will work for all of you if you do it. Amen. So is there anyone here with back pain wants to get your back healed in Jesus' name? All right. Come on up here, Miriam. Then we'll pray for you and get, get you well. Don't argue. Just one of you get there in Jesus' name. All right. Don't waste my time, as the guy said it. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So what we do is have you sit all the way back. Now we have all this on how to heal the sick, but I'm just going to go over it. So what I'm, what's going to happen? I'm going to pick up your ankle bones. And then I'm going to release the power of God. It's going to come right down your back into your spine. And he's going to heal you right now. Are you ready? Okay. So, so right here, I grab inside ankle bone here, inside ankle bone there. And I look them up, I hold them up, and here I go. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I speak to your lower back muscles, ligaments, and tendons to relax. Command all the nerve endings to be unpinched. In Jesus' name, I rebuke all the pain. Look at that. It got longer and shorter. In Jesus' name, I command that back to be adjusted and healed right now. Say, thank you, Jesus. Get up. Check out your new back. You. Bend over. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. No, pain? no pain? On your way. Praise the Lord. Praise. Hallelujah. Now, sometimes, this is a sometimes. Sometimes you have to do all the things to get the desired result. So let's say I grew out her legs and she said, oh man, I still have a little pain. So maybe we should be praying in tongues and asking the Holy Spirit what to do, right? These are things I know to do, but I still ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? Usually because I can get a faster result that way. But there was a time in my life this lady came walking into church, take that back. She was carried into church, sitting on a chase lounge chair, you know, you can adjust. And she had crutches and all, and she sat right up on the front. The whole church prayed for her. I waited like 20 minutes after church, and they're all down there praying. And finally, they left. I walked up to her and said, are you healed? Oh, yeah. I said, well, then get up. Well, I'm still in pain. I said, you told me you are healed. Well, yeah, but I can't. I can't get out, and it still hurts. I said, would you like to be healed? I didn't say, would you like me to pray for you? I said, would you like to be healed? She said, Okay. So I said, well, let's go in the other room because they're going to close up this place. So we went outside into the foyer into another little chapel. And I ministered to her probably for 20 minutes. The leg thing, the arm thing, the neck thing, the pelvic thing. Over and over and over again. It wasn't just one time. It wasn't just two times. It wasn't just three times. It was 20 minutes worth of time. And then I found out there was different spirits working on her at the same time. And I, I said, well, it still hurts over here, and then it hurts over here, and then it hurts down here. And then it dawns on me, it's the Holy Spirit, so give you a revelation. It's a deceiving spirit of pain. Deceiving in her, deceiving in her. I cast out the devils in the name of Jesus. Then when I did the arm thing, leg thing, neck thing, the pelvic thing, totally well. And she threw her crutches over her shoulder, and she goes dancing out of the church with no pain. Say, thank you, Lord. So sometimes, not always, but sometimes it's going to take you longer time to get the job done. So I, I got her name and address, and I went back and followed up with her about a week later. And I went over to her house, and I watched her walking around with one crutch. And I said, give me that crutch. What are you doing with that crutch? Well, I have to go outside and go across the street and get my mail. Just in case I should fall, I will have my crutch. And I said, well, if you fall, get up. You're healed. Give me those crutches. And I took them and I put them in the back of my car. Now what's she going to do? Well, she goes, you're right, Robert. And from that moment on, she got totally healed. So there was a devil that came back to try to deceive her to think. 
pretty soon she'd be on two crutches and right back where she was. See, devil's a liar. But when she understood, so I came back a week later because I didn't want to keep her crutches. She's, oh, I'm over at my church now and I'm teaching how to people how to dance. <laughs> I thought you were tied up for like sick for 15 or 20 years. She was that way until I showed up. Now she's a week later teaching people how to dance for the Lord because she's so happy. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. So don't be afraid. Be bold. Be bold. Go for it. For the Lord your God is with you. Amen. So common sense, we're almost done, and basic knowledge will lead you to minister in greater detail. So be alert to the comments and answers that are given by the one whom you are ministering. So how long have you had this? What has the doctor said? And listen to their answers. You're going to have to go through some of the extra stuff that they always tell you detail. But hear what they're saying. Well, if this would happen, aha, what would happen? I need a creative miracle. If that would, oh, you've got a spirit working. See, so listen and be sensitive to what's going on and to where they are in Jesus' name. Okay? Be sure to pray in tongues with interpretation from the Holy Spirit to make sure you've done all that needs to be done. Especially casting out spirits. Do all this with compassion on the people. Remember now, hard on the devil and light on the people. People are not our problem. It's a spiritual problem. So you got a result, they're feeling good, they're happy. But are you done? It appears, but are you done? That's why you say, okay, Holy Spirit, is there anything else that needs to be done? And you pray. And the Holy Spirit says, they're fine. Then you know you're done. No, 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 you got this and this and this and this. She's thinking that. and she'll, He'll tell you. So then you can approach her and that person and finish the job. Don't go about doing half a job when you have them in front of you. Okay? Now, if a person calls you up in the middle of the night and says, oh, man, let's say it's a friend of yours who's a good Christian and he's out trying to do the works of God, and he calls you at midnight. Can you come over and think, over to Joe's house because we're trying to cast out some spirits? But Joe's been drinking. So there's no sense you getting up at midnight, go drive a half hour, go to Joe's house, spend two hours trying to cast out a devil and the guy's drunk anyway. You might as well just say, how long has he been this way? Oh, he's been a drunk for 10 years. Well, another night's not going to matter unless he's going to kill himself. And you can stop that too. But don't be overtired and fatigued and zealous because you got up in the middle of the night to go help somebody because all they're going to do is wear you out. That's the tr truth. And when the drunkness is gone because you're speaking to the alcohol, the, dr the spirit, and it isn't, uh, this is going to leave the person until he's conscious with what his brain is really thinking. So the next day you can go over and cast out the spirit of addiction and stuff and get rid of the thing and the guy will be happier. It doesn't make sense. So pray and ask the Holy Spirit. Don't go over there because you know what to do. I watched all Robert's stuff and I just know exactly. Yeah, that's good news, but be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's my conclusion. He will do and he will direct you and lead you if you are capable of listening. Amen. So the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Praise the Lord. Father God, we thank you so much for eight awesome sessions of greater works. Thank you, Father God, for giving us this joy of our Lord and giving us this insights and wisdom and understanding. And we pray that each and every person will use these tools as an asset to be better and more of an expert in the kingdom of God and attain success. And all the people of God said, yes and amen and amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you. You pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. 
or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503-652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.